Hi everybody, Jane here, and I'm here today to talk to you about Curiosity Killed the Cat Sitter, which is the first of the Dixie Hemingway mystery series, and it is the only one I have read so far. This book is about a girl named Dixie who used to be a member of the police force, but due to a personal tragedy, she's left the police force and she is now a pet sitter. One day, while she is doing her duties as a pet sitter, she finds a dead body. That dead body does not belong to the person who hired her to pet sit the cat whose house the body is found in. Dixie ends up having to kind of work alongside the police and do a little of her own detective work to try to find out who the person is who's died, why they're there, and what happened to the person who owns the house. Did they kill the man who died? Did they run away? Did they, uh, did they die? Were they kidnapped? What, what is happening? And, of course, her biggest concern is for this cat to make sure that he's taken care of because she can't get a hold of the owner. The owner's not calling her back. So Dixie ends up investigating. I ended up giving this book a 4 out of 5. I will tell you it's a little bit on the lower side of a 4. For me, a 4 is above average. A 3 is a book that is just okay. This book was better than okay, it was better than normal, better than I expect for just a cozy mystery series. It's definitely something that I might be interested in reading again. But I will tell you, while it was good, it wasn't amazing. So I do want to put that out there. It is a four, but like on the lower side of the four for me. For me, there's a wide range of four, and this is kind of on the lower side of four. But I definitely enjoyed it too much to call it a three. So, some of the things I really liked. I liked the secondary characters. Dixie has a brother who is gay, and he and his husband are, are an important part in the story, and they're interesting characters of themselves. There are also some other secondary characters who I found really interesting, but I can't go into too much detail because I feel like it might give stuff away. But, um, for instance, I don't think this is a huge spoiler, uh, while they are at a restaurant, there or a club, they meet a piano player at that club, and that piano player ends up playing a little bit more of a role in the story than initially was suspected, and I enjoyed him as a character as well. So I did enjoy the side characters. I enjoyed Dixie's story. Who she is, how she got there, why she quit the police force, that was so good. Broke my heart, I felt for her, I was really rooting for her to kind of heal from the emotional trauma that she'd sustained because Dixie is, is a character who is still really struggling with everything that happened to her. She she's not in a good place mentally and I love the representation of that and I loved her story. I didn't always love her as a character. I, I had mixed feelings. So on one hand, she is such a good pet sitter. It is clear from what Dixie tells us about animals that she is devoted to pet sitting, that she is really into it, that she loves these animals, and clearly the author had to do a lot of research because there's so many facts and things that Dixie tells us that I just don't think are in a normal animal lover's like, you just wouldn't necessarily know it just because you like animals. So I think this book was probably well-researched. I'd be curious to see if the author had done some work with animals professionally, because there is a lot of conversation about, you know, animal sim signals and different types of animals needing different things, like different breeds of cats having certain personalities. So... I appreciated that Dixie was into the animals. I appreciated her backstory. The only thing for me that was a little rough with Dixie sometimes is she is a bit crass. It is told from her per point of view. And there was just things that she says that I didn't really need to hear. And they aren't big deals. And they didn't ruin the story, but they were definitely kind of eye-rolling things. And I wasn't sure why the author did it. I wasn't sure if she made Dixie a little crass so that 
we can believe that she was a police officer beforehand because I think we see her in a more she's more like a cozy mystery heroine like she is more like the bookseller who goes and investigates mysteries than the hardened cop character so I wasn't sure if her crassness had to do with with that and and I will say too like this book and some of the stuff happens and it is a little more on the PG-13 side of of cozies. A lot of times cozy mysteries are low on content and language and they're kind of closer to the sweet and clean. And while there isn't anything particularly graphic, there are some things in this book that I feel like if you are really particular and like looking for a G-rated mystery, this is probably not not for you. I didn't mind it, but like I said, I did feel like sometimes Dixie was unnecessarily crass for no real good reason. Um, also because of all of her issues, it's a little hard to connect with her. And I wanted more from her story. So we definitely see people trying to encourage her to get back to the police force. and. I think I wanted things to go differently than the way they turned out with that storyline, and maybe that storyline will carry forward. I, I really wanted this book to be the beginnings of Dixie healing, and while I think some healing happened, at the end of the book I wasn't really where I'd hoped to be with her healing process and I wanted to see more of her healing and doing better and getting past as much as is possible the terrible thing that happened. I, I believed her pain. There were parts of this book where I just, I cried. I felt so bad for her and her story, but I wanted to see her have the opportunity to overcome it more than she did in this book. I was interested in the mystery. I was kind of okay with how it ended. It wasn't amazing to me. It wasn't anything that was like, oh wow, that's awesome. It was fine. I, I was fine with how the mystery ended. I did feel like the book itself, post-mystery, ended rather abruptly. So you have the reveal, and then you have like a couple pages where like the tie up, and it was just kind of quick. And while everything was resolved, it wasn't necessarily resolved in a way that I felt really satisfied with, and I'm hoping that the next book kind of pushes a little bit more of the plot and story and is not just another cutesy animal mystery. Although, I love cutesy animal mystery, so I'm not upset that this was a cutesy animal mystery, but I just felt there were so many places that this could go. One of my favorite mystery series is Victoria Thompson's Gaslight Mystery Series, or Thomas. I don't remember how you say her last name, but Vic, uh, it's a Gaslight Mystery Series. And the characters in that grow so much throughout the series, and I'm kind of hoping this author does that with Dixie, that it is a, a very growth oriented story and not just cute animals and a pet sitter who's struggling with some emotional stuff. I did think this was a great book for the first in the series and I'm definitely interested in reading more. So yeah, that was Curiosity Killed the Cat Sitter and if you like cozy mysteries, don't mind a little bit of content. Again, nothing real serious, but just a little bit. Uh, this might be a book you really enjoy. This has been Jane. If you enjoyed my review, please put like. If you are new to my channel, please hit subscribe. My social media is down below, as are a list of the books I've written if you are interested in checking me out as an author. Have a good day. Thank you.